Uh, now, the reason why I work, worked you through this plan was not to convince you that it's the best Mars plan, all, although it is. Um, okay. um, the, the reason is, was simply to show you that taken as a whole, the humans to Mars is not something that is beyond our technical era. Uh, it is not something beyond our generic capability. That there are hardware elements that I've shown you here today that don't exist, but nothing in them represents a technology that is beyond the present age in any sense whatsoever. I mean, here is, is the primary technology set you see here, and um, you can also use the same hardware elements to build a lunar base, although I won't go into that here um, because it would be a talk in itself. But basically, you could land HABs on the moon and just use the cabin in the upper stage of this to come back from the moon. Uh, if that's what you want to do. Uh, but if these things were put out for bid, a heavy lift vehicle, a HAB module, Earth return vehicle, aero brake module, Lockheed Martin, Boeing, and perhaps some other people would put in bids. And if they said, look, we need one of these, we've got to have it in four years. Oh, we can do that. Okay. Give us $3 billion and we'll build you a HAB module. Give us, you know, of course, if they hear that the money is more, they'll ask for more. But, the, the, but I mean, $3 billion is actually a lot of money um, to build a, a tuna can with a life support system. Um, and we costed this out back at the Martin Company uh, back in 1990, and we came to the conclusion that developing this entire hardware set would cost us around $20 billion. And then each Mars mission by the copy would cost around $2 billion, and each lunar mission would cost around $1. So that if you over 20 years and you did 10 uh, uh, lunar missions and five Mars missions, that is, you spent the first 10 years developing the hardware set and the second 10 years flying five Mars missions and 10 lunar missions, it comes out to about $40 billion, which is $2 billion a year, which is 12% of NASA's budget. It's something entirely affordable. Um, um, now, NASA then went and finally took it seriously, and they looked at it, and they enlarged our mission. They went with a crew of six instead of a crew of four, and they went with more equipment and heavier equipment. They, instead of a little SUV rover, they had one the size of an RV land yacht and this and that. Okay, and they had all kinds of junk that were thrown in by various people who wanted to get into the mission. But even so, they came out with a cost estimate for developing all the hardware and flying three Mars missions of $55 billion. And this was the same team, the exact same team using the same costing model that had come up with a $400 billion estimate for the 90-day report. And it was apples and apples. Okay? So the point is not whether it was $40 billion or $55 billion. The point is that it's tens of billions, not hundreds of billions. $40 billion, $50 billion, this is the cost of some medium-sized military procurement for something like the V-22 tilt rotor airplane or any number of miscellaneous uh, military uh, procurements or, or similar procurements in other departments that are done all the time. Hardly something that would break the budget. Okay, $50 billion is one-third of what was given to AIG. Okay, um, so this is something that we can certainly afford, and in fact, I think it's something that we can not afford not to do. Because the question here is this. Ultimately, this is about us. Are we still a nation of pioneers? Are we still people who will do difficult things, who choose to do things not because they are easy, but because they are hard? and do them, and have our great accomplishments celebrated not in space museums, but in newspapers. Okay? You know, in 2030, 2039, are we going to be celebrating the, what would it be, the 70th anniversary of the Apollo moon landing, or the 20th anniversary of Mars One? That's the real question. You know, let me tell you a little story. If I have little time, because it, it's significant. In May 1965, Memorial Day, I was in upstate New York watching a Memorial Day parade. Now, this was, in fact, the 100th anniversary of the first Memorial Day parade. 
because Memorial Day was set up to honor the veterans of the Grand Army Republic, the Union forces who won the Civil War. And this was the 100th anniversary of the Great Review of the Grand Army of the Republic. But of course, the people marching in this parade were not veterans of the Grand Army of the Republic. Um, they were veterans, for the most part, of World War II. And they were celebrating the 20th anniversary of their own victory. Now, who more worthy to celebrate the heroism of the Grand Army of the Republic than the veterans of Normandy and Tarawa? Okay, they were. They were worthy to march in honor of the forces of the Union. Okay, think how pathetic it would be if the U.S. military had no victories to celebrate since Appomattox. Okay, so, you know, we hear this year we're celebrating the 40th anniversary of the Apollo moon landing. We should be celebrating the 20th anniversary of Mars One. We're not. Okay, so now, 20 years from now, we'll be celebrating the, you know, 60th or 70th anniversary of something that some other people did, those people who could do great things or great things or our ability to step into their shoes, our ability to carry on as they were. That's what it's about. So we here today, we have this continental nation based on liberty because we had predecessors who were willing to come here and land on Plymouth Rock and take on the hardship of colonizing the eastern seaboard and moving west and taking on all the challenges that there were and building transcontinental railroads and defending liberty on battlefields and doing all of this. Um, okay, we have what we had because our predecessors had courage. And unless we are willing to step into those shoes, we will not be giving to our descendants and those who follow us something as good as what was given to us. And that is a betrayal of our trust. It is something we cannot afford to do. And that is the message we need to take to Congress today. Thank you.